So, distinguished guests, let's now call on the Minister of Transport to talk about the goods train. Honorable Minister. Thank you very much for that important question. How soon will you bring back the goods train? Let me confirm that at the moment we have over 100 wagons well stationed, well positioned, ready for freight, ready for carriage of goods from one place to another all over the country. The process is on to acquire more wagons in the course of time and we have equally procured 20 pressurized tank wagons for carriage of petroleum products. Once the trucks are fully rehabilitated, the carriage of goods and freight through our rail system will resume fully. But while that is even being done, we already have services where trains are carrying goods from a Wekoro, discharging cement in Ibadan, Oshogbo, and here in Ilorin. This is being done weekly. We equally have services done weekly where a dry cassava is carried from here in Ilorin to the Lagos port for export. Our freighters and various stakeholders and businessmen and women are waiting for us to complete the rehabilitation of the tracks so that they will patronize the railway system. I want to assure you that in addition to this I have mentioned, there is general freight going on between Lagos up to Ilorin because like I said before, the track has been certified from Lagos to Ilorin. And by the end of the year, we hope that the entirety of the Western track from Lagos to Kano will be fully certified by the Government of Inspector of Railway and we shall resume full train services for both passengers and freight. There was a general question on what the Federal Government is doing about the Ilorin Bodhisattva Road. The Minister of Information has eloquently briefed you on the Federal Government's determination to rehabilitate all the major roads and indeed the roads under the Federal Government con uh, control. The Federal Government has pumped a lot of money for this year and money has been budgeted or is being budgeted for 2013 to ensure that all the major roads are rehabilitated in this country. Of course, there are a lot of challenges on the roads. The federal government is determined by prioritization to address all these challenges. It is not possible for government to rehabilitate all these roads within one year. Obviously, it will have to take some years. And of course, you know the problem is compounded because of the pressure on the road. That is why the compelling need on government to rehabilitate the railway and then indeed to build the modern rail system in this country becomes very, very imperative. Government is determined to ensure that we ease transportation of the citizenry in this country. And therefore, the rehabilitation exercise will continue with, in earnest. The modern lines being put in place will be pursued with great vigor to ensure that transportation of passengers and goods is uh, seasoned up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Transport. We would now invite uh, Mr. Labrab Marku, Information Minister, to react to his own area. Well, thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Executive Honor, distinguished citizens. You can see that it can be very, very tough, this forum, 
because it's an opportunity for citizens to express their feelings. And let me congratulate those who are asking questions from all over the world through the social media. We made this program such that Nigerians anywhere in the world are following Quara now. The attention of the entire world is on, is on your excellency and all of us seated in this hall. And that is why you are seeing questions from as far away, you know, places as far away as Afghanistan, <laughs> United States, and several other places where Nigerians are following on what we are doing. And this is good governance. There is no leadership in this country, even in this continent, that is doing what we are doing now, presenting itself for citizens to ask questions and to express their feelings. This is what we are talking about. It's about the process. It's about the process. And a lot of questions have been asked to me personally. First of all, I travel by road to Kwara to show not only commitment, because this is a fact-finding tour. You know, is this, you know, in the past, you fly by air while other people are going by road. I say on this tour, I'm going to go by road so that I can assess the situation and also report to the Federal Ministry of Fox where there are problems and there are complaints. And as I was talking to you, when those questions were asked, I asked my aide to call the Minister of Works, and you've been in communication of some of the questions that have been asked. And let me tell you what he told me, is that the major areas of challenge for the federal government is the road between uh, Elori and Jeba. That road is priority number one for the Federal Minister of Works. And also we have the road that is leading from Jeba to Bida. That road is also a very serious priority for us to achieve smooth transportation. But for the section of the express between Elorin and Ibadan, he reassured me that in this dry season, God willing, government should be able to complete this section, at least to facilitate very good transportation from there. Now, it is not going to be possible for every road to be taken at the same time because government, somebody was saying federal government is taking more money. Now look at the roads you have mentioned, only in Quara. Can you imagine the cost of each of those roads? And those are, there are federal roads in all the 36 states of the federation. Those the roads alone. Then you have not talked of the railway yet. You are talking of railway all through the country is the federal government. You are talking of power supply, it is the federal government. Now, you are talking of major projects in agriculture, it is the federal government. So, unfortunately for us in this country, things had gone so bad for decades. And now President Jonathan has the burden, like Obama is facing in the U.S., where citizens are saying, what are you doing? What are you going to do here? I can tell you that honestly, we see these questions as an opportunity to remind us of our responsibility and the fact that we must continue to work harder and carry you along so that you know what we are doing. Now, specifically in Quara, uh, the NSC president, uh, the chairman, I think, uh, asked a question. What are you doing in Quara other than the things, the railways and so on? I want to thank the governor for his commitment to employment and the various areas of helping youth, you know, to be self-reliant. Nigeria is the only country where, as you leave school, you are looking to government for employment. It's the only country. And in no serious industrial nation of the world, modern country, will you have majority of people working for government. It's not possible. The idea of the transformation agenda of Mr. President is to return attention to regenerating a private sector driven economy. The entire transformation program is to encourage the expansion of the, of the private sector through policy reforms. And I can tell you that in the last 10 years particularly, the federal initiatives in promoting jobs are already taking place. Take the telecoms. Before it was just government. Nitel had 450 analog lines. Nobody could set up a private telecom company in Nigeria. We just suffered and there was, the communication was not there, it, jobs were killed. Now, the opening up of the telecom sector has produced 90 million lines in Nigeria, 90 million mobile lines. And if you see many Nigerians, now you see the youths, people employ selling recharge cards, people employ in the telecom companies, they employ far more number than Nitel could ever have dreamed in this country today. Now, if you move from there to cement production, the government has also withdrawn its leadership in cement and handed over to the private sector. 
Now, if you look at Obajana cement factory alone, which we commissioned this year, owned by the Dangote Group, is the largest single cement plant in the world now. And in cement production, we are virtually arriving at self-sufficiency. In the next couple of years, Nigeria is not going to import cement. Everything will be produced within Nigeria. And the cement sector is employing hundreds of thousands of Nigerians, people selling cement, people hawking and associated businesses. This is happening. Now, we also want to reform the other sectors, particularly agriculture. Between the, uh, Dr. Adesheno, the President Minister of Agriculture, has a very comprehensive and revolutionary program on agriculture. In the past, government was simply busy importing fertilizer and distributing them, and we thought we were doing agriculture. Now we are reforming completely the new program is to desegregate the various value chains in agriculture. So the government is now funding every value chain from cropping uh, to harvest to preservation to uh, marketing, all these sectors. And the Central Bank of Nigeria, in partnership with the, uh, with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, has set up a 450 billion Naira agricultural loan process for farmers. If you want to go into cocoa, if you want to go into rice production, if you want to go into processing or preservation, right now that fund has been established. And I can assure you that in the next couple of years, agriculture in this country is going to be completely different from what you used to see. We have a program through the show program for rice production. We have already restored the rice meals in Abakiliki. Most of the rice we are eating in Nigeria today is better. If you look at the rice that is processed in Nigeria, it's better than the one coming from Thailand uh, and other places. We want to continue with that. Also promote the cassava bread. In the presidency today, Mr. President does not eat any bread except cassava bread and ofada rice. The idea is to encourage local food, and we want that to, for citizens. Because sometimes, let me tell you, it's our country. Sometimes we can be so unpatriotic. If you go to some places, their breakfast comes from the U.S., their lunch comes from China, and their dinner from Brazil. Eat food grown in Quara, and the economy will grow. We must eat what we produce is very, very important. So that is part of our process of ensuring we have food security. Now, in employment, the federal government has a program right now to employ 10,000 people in Kwara State.